Our lesson today is entitled, Boldness to Stand Courageously in God's Providence. And it's found in 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 5 through 18. This is Sunday School Lesson for October 27, 2024. My name is Tony Miller. And the key verse for our lesson today is found in the 18th verse of the text. And it reads as follows, I have made no trouble for Israel. Elijah replied, you and your family are the troublemakers. For you have refused to obey the commands of the Lord and have worshipped the images of Baal and said, again, boldness to stand courageously in God's providence is our subject. So the aim of this lesson is to compare Elijah's response to speak to Ahab, to that of Obadiah's response to report back to Ahab, and to gain a sense of Obadiah's concerns when reporting Elijah's message to Ahab and act in boldness when speaking the word of God. It's my YouTube channel. I ask you to please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll get my lessons automatically. Please like my lessons, please share my lessons, and leave me comments. All of these things continue and encourage me to share this word of God with you. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're just as grateful for this opportunity to share this word of God with you. And Lord, right now, we ask forgiveness for our sins. Wash us and make us worthy vessels to be used by you. We surrender our will to you at this moment. Use this, Lord, as your humble servant. It's in the matchless name of Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. We do pray and ask these things always. Amen. I share with you in the last two weeks, I share with you again, this is the last time that I'll be sharing this whole concept. But my, my, my podcast is designed to start in the, in the first week of November. So my, I, I'm, I've developed podcasts and, uh, and the goal is, my, my lessons I prepare for you, they, they have a life cycle of about 10 days to two weeks. And there's probably four or five different lessons and I only prepare two of them. So my audience is kind of shrinking and somewhat in that regard. But my goal is, and, and my, my charge and call is to the body of Christ, not just the Sunday school students. So thus I'm uh, preparing some uh, um, messages for my podcast. I've already done two and uh, I will, uh, I will, uh, my goal is to do somewhere between 10 and 20 this year, just to, and begin like maybe week after week uploading to my podcast. My cap, my podcast is intended to provide the listener and the learner with an explanation of various biblical principles and stories and standard biblical doctrine and messages and to untangle controversy, provide biblical history, dispel misconceptions uh, and comment on current events, at least from my point of view. And again, I'm going to start with the audio and I, I'm going to be YouTube, Spotify and some other places. I'll also probably, you know, take some clips on my Instagram as well. And hopefully I can share some wisdom that I've, that I've gained in preparing um, this content over the last 20 years and uh, seven years here on YouTube. My objective is to create content that will supplement your own studies and that this podcast content becomes a resource where you can gain valuable content to enhance your understanding about God, the Bible, and Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So when we look, when we look at the timeline of this lesson, it's, it's, it's at this period of time of the divided kingdom, and, and, and now this one Elijah is speaking in that period of time. Amen. So this week is a lesson that I taught three and a half years ago. At that time, it was called Elijah, Prophet of Courage. And now our lesson today is called Boldness to Stand Courageously in God's Providence. It's exactly the same text. It's exactly the same message. So uh, when you get into the body of this lesson, again, I guess you can supplant that whole title, the boldness to stand courageously in God's providence for this uh, Isaiah Prophet of Courage. It is the same message. Uh, I don't have time this week to start it all over again. I think I did a great job then, so uh, I, I will uh, I, I will allow you to just. Uh, I mean, I've I've decided to just give you this lesson that I've already prepared. Amen. So upon Solomon's death, the Solomon, this great leader, this great king, this this man who all the people of the region wanted to hear, hear from him. He had the most wisdom, the smartest man in the world, the richest man in, in this known world as well, as well. but 
upon his death, his son Rehoboam was exceeding, but he was not equipped to be the king. And then, however, the top ten, the, the ten of the, the tribes of Israel refused to accept him as king because he was not that effective. But, but what happens is that there's another one that, that, had, that Solomon had mentored, that he was more charismatic like Solomon, and his name was Jeroboam. And, and, then, and now what happens is that the, the, this, this monarchy will be split into two kingdoms, the northern and the southern, where Jeroboam would be the one who would lead the, the ten tribes to the north, and, and Rehoboam would reign over the smaller southern region called Judah. Let's move on. Amen. I'm going to share with you that Jeroboam became the king over the top 10 tribes. That's why I said that, that it, over 75, maybe 80% of the, his people were lost, and, and, and Rehoboam would, would keep the final two tribes, that would be uh, Judah and Benjamin. That's how this tribe is. That's how uh, this this. Uh, this kingdom will, will now be divided, and there's serious problems along with this division, as we'll see in our lesson. Amen. So after this Solomon death, and they, the Jeroboam would have Samaria, would be to the north, would be the capital, and there in this northern part in, in Israel, where the, the kingdom was called Israel, that he would have, because he did not, he had a, an issue with. Rehoboam, he could not take the people down to the south to go into the temple where the temple was that they made their own religious foundation and they would have two golden calves in the, in in uh, in this northern kingdom and they would follow into idol worship, also the worship of those Canaanite people as well. And the southern kingdom would be Judah and there would be the temple of God and there would be uh, God's people again. This is how the kingdoms were divided after the death of Solomon. Again, and significant here to note that Solomon too was a was not so great. I mean, he was a great guy, but he too fell into the same thing of those all those women that he had, all those wives that he had that that he also ushered into that that idol worship that that he allowed the idol worship into that uh, the God's people because of him following the, the gods of his wives. We'll see that be a common thing theme in our lesson today. Let's move on. Amen. So there are two kingdoms of God's people. And like I said, and the, and the Israelites formed the capital of Samaria and they, they worshiped those two idols, the golden calves, and the, Jew, the Judeans kept their capital in the south. And they, this would stay this way for 200 years until God would finally decide it's time to judge these people. And the northern ten tribes will be we scattered like God had told them in the beginning that he said that if you go into idol worship, I'm going to scatter you. And God would do that. And would scatter them in the hands of the Assyrian people. And now, and, but through this 200 years that you would find there'll be a litany of, of ineffective, disobedient, and corrupt kings. And we'll find that out in our lesson today. Let's move on. Amen. So I shared with you last week, I'll share with you again, that it, like I said, in, in, the, in the, the, the northern tribes, where we'll be focusing on today, that all the kings were bad. And in the, the, the Judah, you had a bunch of bad kings. Last week, we were in uh, number 16, uh, Josiah. Uh, but this week, we're in the uh, northern 10 tribes, where all of the kings were horrible. And I want to share with you a number of things that you see with these kings, that they were so horrible that some of them only lasted a certain amount of time. If you look at, at, at some of them, at, that Zimri only lasted seven days, and um, one month, and six months, and two years, and seven days. And you see the, the ones <clears throat> in Judah, they lasted longer. And in this period of kings, that you would also have this period of kings and prophets. And as I shared with you before, that Saul uh, was a king for 40 years, David was a king for 40 years, and Solomon also was a king for 40 years. And now, in, this, in our lesson today, we will we will have a, a, a lesson and a brief discussion about this one King Ahab, and he is noted as being the worst of all of the kings on this page. He was the worst, and his father Omri was a bad dude too. He was not a very good king, and if you look at every one of the kings, were just horrible kings, all falling after Jeroboam. Again, as we see in this lesson. Our lesson today is about the northern kings, and we'll talk about number seven, and we'll talk about the prophet. 
Like I said, we go in this period of kings and we talk about kings also have a corresponding prophet. The king was the one who ruled over the people and the prophet is the one that God will speak to the prophet through to give a message to the people that the prophet be the mouthpiece of God. Let's move on in this lesson. Amen. So Ahab was the son of King Omri, which I share with you, the former military commander who has taken over the throne after laying siege over Tezara. And he was self-proclaimed king, and he set fire the palace around himself after seeing the city was taken, that in his death, <clears throat> this dude set, the, set the, the, the palace on fire. And he was wicked ruler, and he taught his son the his evil ways. And after Omri had passed away, then Ahab took over. And all the stuff that he learned from his his horrible father, he put in practice as he ruled Israel. And again, I share with you that every one of those kings to the north, they all were idol worship. They they all worshipped the the the, God, the Baals and the Asherahs, and they all worshipped the king, the, the gods of the the pagan uh, the pagan uh, uh, Canaanite uh, gods. And this one Ahab name means father, brother, or uncle. Again, this is a story about this horrible king Ahab and the other people I'll share with you along this way. Amen. So the setting of this lesson, Kings, uh, First Kings, chapter 18, verses 8 through 15, is during the severe drought in Israel, in which uh, was a result of King Ahab's disobedient to God's commandments. And King Ahab and his chief servant Obadiah are searching for grass to save the royal horses and, and mules from dying. And, and they, they divide the land between them to cover more ground. Again, this is somewhat of a setting of where we are in this particular lesson text. Amen. This Elijah. Elijah, God called Elijah to prophesy to speak out against the spell worship in Israel and, and to actually take part in any of this abomination of God's chosen people. And he was one who fought zealously against the worship of, the, or for the worship of the true and living God, Jehovah, Yahweh, Adonai, to help God's people to remain faithful to the Lord. And he, and he was a defender of the poor and he dragged unworthy kings down to destruction. And if you read through the book, you'll get more of what Elijah was about. Let's move on to our lesson. Amen. So that's 13 minutes of background. Let's get into this lesson. Amen. So this passage that I'm sharing with you today highlights the tension between the prophet Elijah and the wicked king Ahab, setting the stage for a dramatic showdown between Elijah and the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. Uh, and, and it's a powerful narrative about faith and obedience and the consequences of turning away from God. Again, as I shared before, boldness to stand courageously in God's providence is the, this new subject. And the subject that I've shared with you that you'll see in this lesson is Elijah, Elijah prophet of Kurt. Same lesson, just different name. Amen. So about 62 years after these divided kingdoms that I just shared with you, when after this death of Solomon, Ahab's reign be, began, and, and he was the seventh king of the northern kingdom, and he kept God's people in this idol worship, and the Baals and the Asherahs, and I'll share more about the Baals later, and, and the Asherahs were just as bad as the Baals, that they did the animal sacrifices as well, and they had of prostitutes, and just horrible stuff. And the principal, principal prophet at this time was Elijah. Elijah, again, he is one of the principal characters we'll have in our lesson today. And it was Elijah who single-handedly opposed this king Ahab and Jezebel, his wife, because of Ahab's terrible rule over God's chosen people. This idol worship was just horrible with all of the other things that came with it. And Elijah came before the king and swore in the name of Almighty God that rain would cease to fall in the entire region. And this decree would remain in place until he, Elijah, would revoke it, showing that who was in charge and not this king and not 
these idols that he worshipped. And sure enough, after the afterwards, uh, a fierce drought raged through the region, and Elijah went into hiding as Jezebel was hell bent on killing him, as well as the other prophets of God. And three years had passed, and, and God spoke once again. And this time, He told Elijah to appear before Ahab, and hope that this time the king would be ready for this drop decree to be rescinded. That's of the, the backdrop of our lesson today and, and note the situation has grown desperate because even this king himself that personally along with his chief Obadiah another central feature uh, figure in our lesson today he actually went out on, on a search for grass for his animals the craziest thing is why is he not looking for grass or water for his own people but he rather has more focus on his animals his, his horses and his mules and, and they divided the territory where they were searched between the two of them and Ob Obadiah was was this very righteous man and, and he was righteous before before God, but he, he also was working under the very nose of, of, of this king Ahab and his wife Jezebel, and he would hide the prophets because she was hell bent on killing all the prophets of God. And he took responsibility for hiding this these people, these prophets of God, and feeding them food and water. Let's move on. So there was a drought in the land. That's the backdrop of our lesson. That this 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 prophet of God that he he swore to the king that that there's going to be a drought, and he did. And this is what occurred. And this is the backdrop of where we are in this lesson. Let's move on. Amen. The Sunday school lesson: Elijah, this prophet of courage, First Kings chapter eighteen, verses five through 18 and we'll use the new living again as we did last week and this is our backdrop and let's begin with verses 5 through 7 so Ahab said to Obad Obadiah I must check every spring and valley and land to see if there can find enough grass for at least some of my horses and mules so I need to share with you excuse me <coughs> that God had just told and we start here in verse 5, but in the text before, that God had just told Elijah to go and present himself to Ahab. And he said he will send, he will send this rain that has not happened for this three years. And and on and, and his name, Obadad, uh, who is uh, this uh, this leader of this, uh, he's uh, like the chief uh, uh, guy uh, uh, with this king. His name means worshiper, uh, worshiper of Yahweh or servant of Yahweh. But, but God had just told Elijah that to go to this this king and he says and I, and then I'm a it's time we'll let them have rain that, that, that now that, that that Ahab is uh again that he is he's had this this uh property that him and they had broke up and and he says that he says go and find enough grasses to feed for my horse and my mule so they divided that land like I said between them and Ahab went his way and Obadiah went the other way by himself in verse seven <clears throat> and Obadiah was walking along and he suddenly saw Elijah coming towards him and Obadiah recognized him Elijah and then at once he bowed down to the ground before and is it is it really you my lord Elijah he asked again this man has been in hiding for some time let's move on amen so Jezebel the king's wife had been massacring these prophets of the lord and Obadiah had hid some of hid hid them and he fed them bread and water. This man was a brave man who stood for God and his prophets in a very difficult time. But this Jezebel, horrible person as you know throughout history that, that no one wants to name their kid Jezebel because she was a horrible woman, at least according to God's people. Let's move on. Amen. But here's the thing. That this man has been on, on the run for for three years now, and 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 again that that this woman is killing hundreds of prophets of God, and 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 they no doubt want this Elijah, but Elijah had no fear, no fear in presenting himself, because God Yahweh, Jehovah, Adonai, the Creator of the universe, Almighty God, is on his side. God's on your side. You can have this courage that this prophet would have. We're referencing in this lesson today. Let's move on. So Elijah, prophet of courage, in verses eight and nine, and in verse eight, 
Yes, it is, Elihu replied. Is it really you? That's what he says. And he says that Elijah, Elijah has Elijah been hiding for three years and the king was looking for him to no avail. And he was looking and turning over every rock trying to find them. There's no rain. The people are in a severe drop and the king himself was looking for now he got himself out there looking for food for his horses. That's how serious the drought was that the king himself was going to try to find, you know, uh, resources for his horses. Is it you, Elijah? Yes, it is, Elijah says. Now go and tell your master, Elijah is here. I'm here. Yes. And verse 9. No, sir. No, sir. Obadiah protested. What harm have I done to you that you are sending me to my death at the hands of this king Ahab? Elijah's not understanding what's being said here. Elijah's not understanding, but to hear this Obadiah is, is having some angst about trying to, to give this message to this king. Remember, his wife is killing prophets. Let's move on. This Elijah prophet of courage. So Obadiah feared that if he announced that he had met a Elijah, that the prophet disappeared again, that Ahab would punish Obadiah for letting up Elijah get away. Again, verse 10 to 12 here. And I swear by the Lord your God that the king has searched every nation and every kingdom on earth from the end to end to find you. And each time he is told, Elijah isn't here. And King Ahab forced the kings of that nation to swear to the truth of this claim. <coughs> Excuse me. And they, and now you say, go and tell my master that Elijah's here and then you go bail on me and leaving me to be killed by this Jezebel? No, verse 12. But as soon as I leave, you and the Spirit of the Lord will carry you away so no one knows where you can be found. They have come to find you. He will kill me. Yet I have been a true servant of the Lord all my life. And that's why this man was, and I think that's an important part of this lesson, that, that, that God kept this man. He was not on the run. I don't think he was running in fear for three years. He was probably just doing his own thing. And when he got close, the spirit of the Lord would carry him away so that he would not be found. And here this Obadiah would, would mention this knowing that God has got his man's back. He's got this prophet back, and thus this prophet would have his courage. Let's move on. Elijah, prophet of courage, verses 13 and 14. In verse 13, has no one told you, my Lord, about the time when Jezebel was trying to kill the Lord's prophets? And she did. And I hid a hundred of them in the caves and supplied them with food and water. In verse 14. And now you say, go and tell your master Elijah's here. Sir, if I do that, he will certainly kill me. He along with this Jezebel. She. Here's the thing. They, 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 they want to pro make this prolification of this, of this uh, idol worship. That, that, that she comes from an idol uh, worshiping uh, um, region uh, and, 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 and this, this uh, king is married this woman and she was a prostitute and, 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 and they did all these different these horrible things and they, and they worship all these the bells and the asherahs and all and, that, and that's what this issue that she wanted everybody to worship her God and thus not the God of the Israelites let's move on So Queen Jezebel persuaded her husband to promote the worship of the deities of Baal and the Asherahs among the people of Israel. It was commonplace in the era of kings of uh, the king of, uh, kingdom to establish the worship accommodation for their foreign wives. That's why I share with you that's what happened to Solomon. The Solomon 
he he he, his, he had all those 700 wives, 700 wives, 700 concubines, and 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 a lot of those were were wives that he took on from the areas that they conquered, and and he had them, and and that's what sent that people into idol worship because he made accommodation for the for the uh, the idol worship of those wives. In this case, Jezebel required the installation of the temple, a temple to these gods in in this uh, northern kingdom, and an altar to Baal. Asher poles and an altar in which it was all built was built in Samaria in the capital of the northern uh, northern king and since she was a Phoenician Jezebel more than likely had an extreme active role in this promotion because she wanted those gods to be what their the people would worship and 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 she she had an active role that was more normal more than normal than what any other queen would have and this king relented and allowed her to have this active role in bringing about this idol worship this northern tribe of god's chosen people amen let's move on so i share with you parenthetically baal worship baal was a false god of rain and dew and an extreme male deity of the ancient phoenicians and the canaanites and that's just, and this is important here because what happens is that is that that God purposely stopped the rain because this this guy, this God, Baal was the one in charge of the rain that they would give these animals sacrifices to the Baal so that they would have enough rain to, to water their crops and people would give, they would have a, ch a child, a boy or a girl and they would, they would throw it in the pit of the fire so that the, the Baal would give them enough crop for the next year. The rituals included less than sex ritual a, a ritual temple prostitution and child sacrifice and that's what there was going on here in the northern tribes and that's what that there this what this is just bell was was proliferating to this people that they would they would follow after the bells and they would follow after the asherahs and 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 this is what was wrong with this whole picture and now this one uh prophet uh elijah is coming to stop all of this madness that's where we are today and god wanted to show that who's in charge of this rain and the elements is it god or is it Baal? and that's what this is all about let's move on amen so elijah the prophet of courage in verses 15 through 16 but elijah said i swear by the lord almighty god in whose presence i stand at this present myself to ahab this very day that I'll stand here that I swear by the Lord in whose presence I stand that I will present myself to Ahab this very day I'm not gonna have the the, the, the Spirit of the Lord whisk me away God has called me here to come to present myself to the king and I will be obedient to what the Lord has required me to do in verse 16 so Obadiah went to tell King Ahab that Elijah has come and Ahab went out to meet this prophet Elijah. So our lesson today is move check verse 16. Let's move on. So Elijah, prophet of courage, verse 17. And and uh, so God challenged the worship of Baal, who's supposed to control the rain. And then now there's a uh, is the trouble here is that Almighty God is more superior to that God of Baal. For the last three years, God has not allowed it to, to rain. But when, when Ahab saw him, he, he exclaimed, So is it you, you troublemaker of Israel, that, uh, that, that uh, Ahab is trying to say that, that the trouble is with this prophet? This prophet has all this power, and this prophet is making trouble for this people for the last three years is this, this prophet I've tried to find you I've looked all over and and all, and all the trouble we're having right now is because of you 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 troublemaker I'm, I'm out right now trying to find grass for my horses and, and, and mules and all that because you are the one making trouble for me but God challenged the control the bells they're supposed to control the, the rain Almighty God has appeared to their God Baal that's what the issue is. It's not the trouble that Elijah is making. Let's move on. Amen.
So Elijah, prophet of courage in verse 18. Uh, I have made no trouble for Israel. This is the key verse. Elijah replied, you and your family are the troublemakers for you have refused to obey the commands of the Lord and you have worshipped the image of Baal and instead and God told them back in Exodus 20 that he says do not make for yourself any graven images or any idol or the likeness of anything that's heaven or earth below and he says do not bow down to them or serve them he says this he gave this warning back in Exodus as they moved while they're in this wilderness and God made this this command that he says you cannot make any idol or bow down or worship them but this is the trouble that is being uh, perpetrated not what Elijah is doing here amen let's move on so that's our last text I believe of our lesson and then and, and it's uh there is a finger pointing going on right here that uh, that the uh that that uh Elijah is saying that the problem is you uh and you who have turned the family and turns God people into idol worship and and you and your family you and your wife that you guys are turning this people against Almighty God and 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 then this this king this King Ahab is saying that no that he says no that you are are, are the one who's stopping us from this water and then you're the one that's creating this problem and there's this blame so did God judge the king and the people for their idol worship or did Baal stop the rain because Elijah was opposing his authority and this is what the the the, the insanity of this that that the the king is trying to say that because of Elijah because Elijah's on the scene now that 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 Baal that his his god of Baal is is uh is not letting it rain that uh they can sacrifice all the kids that they want but because of this one Elijah here, that dude, he's stopping all of the raining activity for the last three years. And, and God is saying, that, no, no, and I'm judging your people. So I, Elijah said, no, no, my God, Jehovah, Yahweh, he is the one who's in control. And he is stopping all the things that are going on and all the calamities that you are dealing with and all of the issues that are you and your people are dealing with is because of our God, the God of the universe. You can blame me all you want, but God is judging you. And this, let's move on. Now, share with you parenthetically that no matter how things work or look right now in your life, God is still in control of our lives. And that's what's happening here, that here you have this prophet that he would have courage to come boldly to come into an atmosphere where they're killing prophets he's coming to a, a ruthless king and he would come boldly and, and proclaim that that he is here and and present and whatever circumstances that we have in our life that we could believe that god is for us and god is in control of these issues in our life and we should stay in peace and believe that God is always with us in all of the directions that we move, that everywhere that this 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 prophet went, he went for, for three years that God was with them. We we know just like this the the, the image of the, the the walking on the on the beach and the footprints in the sand that God is always with us, even what though we don't even know that that is what we see here, and that no matter how things look right now, God is still in control of your life, of our lives as well. That's what we learned in this lesson, and that's one of the things I want to drop a little nugget on you tonight, tomorrow, whenever you hear this lesson. Amen. And I share with you that this prophet was courageous. He says, be courageous and be strong, and don't be afraid of the terrify or be terrified of these issues that are going on with your life, because because of them, the Lord your God goes with you. And he will never forsake you. Do not be afraid, terrified of these things that happen in your life. For the Lord, your God, goes with you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. That's why this prophet had courage. And that's why we should have courage in all the issues of our life. Wherever we go, 
Remember that God is for us and not against us. That God, when we have God in every issue of our lives, we add him to the circumstance, we have a majority and we win every time. That we have not because we ask not. That we have to ask God and he will hear our prayers and answer our prayers. The promises of God are yes and amen. Be of good courage. That is this lesson today. This prophet of courage. And we should be prophets as well of courage. Remember that God is with us wherever we go. Let's move on. And this is our final cell. Boldness to stand courageously in God's providence is our subject of our lesson. And 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 when a religious being is said to give people providence, he's taking care of them and providing for them. And the prophet tells us to be bold and courageous before Almighty God, and He will always be with you during your circumstances. God is always with us. We just have to know that, and that's what this prophet is telling us along our journey today and that is our sunday school lesson this week my prayer to something you've learned this week strengthen your faith the lord provides all your needs you learn something worthy of sharing it's in the matchless name of jesus who is our lord and savior that we do pray and ask these things always in this name we pray amen thanks so much for your time